to the Navy in 1988. Uh, it was October of 88, so not too far after I graduated high school. Well, it wasn't looking too promising that I'd be going to college, uh, so I had interest in going in the military, um, and actually it was a choice between Army or Navy. <laughs> okay. It was whichever recruiter came and got me first, because I was to that point where I wanted to change and just wanted to go do something, you know, mm -hmm. meaningful. And, uh, you know, the Navy, uh, and actually what was funny is because I grew up in such a rural area and didn't, we didn't travel a lot as a family. You know, we went to like, you know, uh, um, like our family reunion was in Missouri. That's the most we traveled. So as soon as the Navy said the boot camp for women at the time was in Orlando, I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm. Orlando, that's Florida. I've never been there before. Mm -hmm. That was even more enticing. So so yeah, I went into the Navy and it just uh, um, went from there. Okay. As I look back, I, I, I'm thankful that I did it. You know, um, going out, on, out to sea is, is exciting, but then after a while, once you get used to it, it's almost like Groundhog Day every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was exciting, working on the aircraft carrier, just the, our helicopters were always the first ones to take off and the last ones to land because you know, we would do search and rescue. Okay. So that's what the purpose, and, and hunting the submarines. I mean, they did practice doing that too. But um, but yeah, we'd be on the flight deck. I, I remember some of the first few times with the F-18s, because we would be right next to the tower on the carrier. Oh, so right. we'd be standing there waiting as some of the flight ops were going, and as the jets are taken off, I mean, the rumble of the F-18s, just they reverberate through your body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's like, I can't believe I'm standing here experiencing this. But, mm -hmm. um, but it, you know, the aircraft carrier itself is a small city. It's self-sufficient. It's got, you know, you know, I, I never ate bad on the carrier, that's mm -hmm. for sure. They had so many varieties of just, you know, main courses, fast food, healthy section, whatever. And they always treated us monthly um, to, like, a surf and turf. Oh, okay. Yeah, to celebrate birthdays and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that was neat. Um, and that was on the USS Nimitz, which is one of the more popular known aircraft carriers okay. in this day and age. <laughs> so, and I was able to go to um, Hong Kong, Singapore, um, went to Dubai, which is not what it looks like today. When I went to Dubai, it was still desert. <laughs> oh, okay. They built that way up since I was in Dubai. And then uh, Thailand, and of course we always hit Hawaii on the way back. Mm -hmm. So you know, I loved what I did, um, and I and I worked very hard to earn the respect and the position I had. When I was on the carrier, I was the night shift supervisor, so I had four other guys that worked under me. Uh -huh. But um, I was always one of those people that, you know, led by example. You know, if, and what was exciting for me is even the pilots would trust what I did. You know, they knew I knew my troubleshooting. So, like, they'd come back on the deck and they'd be like, get Ojeda up here. We got this. We want her to see this or whatever. And I'd be like, come on, let's go. I would never send them up there to do work I've never, you know, have performed. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was always one of those, that, let's go, you know, dig in with, the, you know, the people I worked with. I was never a, yeah, go do that kind of thing. <laughs> so let's go get it done. Uh, I was on one of the first cruises that they put women on. So okay. there's like 5,000 people on a carrier. Mm -hmm. And there was only about 500 women on that deployment. Wow. They may have increased over the years, but um, that deployment, from my understanding, there was only about 500 of us. Hmm. So, and yeah, there's challenges there. I used to have to correct people. Um, that would make statements about, you know, women being on a carrier or women um, in certain job positions. So, you know, I, I honestly wasn't in during wartime, um, but I was explaining even to Johnny that I was in during a time where it was still just as difficult. You know, there were, a lot of people didn't know this, but there were three times that I nearly had been, you know, confronted or borderline assault. But the one time I reported it, it was turned around on me. Mm -hmm. Like, I instigated it. So I just, you know, 
you know, it's one of those things where I just kept fighting and just doing my work. Now, I to admit, there are women out there who took advantage of their positions, but I, and I had to keep fighting that stereotype too. Mm-hmm. So there are a lot of hard work, working women in the military. Mm-hmm. So, Absolutely. but I mean, I, I, I learned a great deal and, um, you know, everything I learned, I was able to take with me. And when I got out, I still worked on helicopters for a short while. And then I, um, I worked in different like technical jobs. So, because I never felt like I lived up to some of what the veteran stuff has done. And I had a gentleman who had his leg taken off by stepping on an IUD when he was overseas. And he came up to me and thanked me for my service. And I'm like, well, no, I don't even feel like, you know, I deserve that because, you know, you're, he's like, he goes, I got to correct you there. He goes, we all had our job to do. He goes, you're, what you did in the military was just as important as what I did. Mm -hmm. He goes, you know, we all served and, you know, we had our jobs to do. So he goes, regardless of what happened to me, you know, your experiences are just as important. Mm -hmm. And that got to me. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Sorry. No, it's okay. So... Have you noticed other veterans kind of feeling like that too when they when they open up to you? Sometimes, mm-hmm. but um, you know I'm thankful for Johnny because even as a female veteran, I don't get the recognition. Mm-hmm. I even have this on there, and people won't say nothing. They'll thank a guy next to me mm-hmm. before they even say thank you for your service. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it's a uh, it's rough, but. I still stand proud and behind what I did, so. Sorry. Yeah, and it's never been about me trying to um, um, be like any kind of feminist or anything. I was yeah. very proud of what I did. Mm-hmm. And I worked hard. Mm-hmm. So, And it's funny how people, it's just funny how people look past a, a woman veteran. And it still happens, you know. Mm-hmm. Um it's just crazy <laughs> but then again I just I've learned to just you know just keep charging forward and helping others I mean it isn't so much about the recognition for me but it's it's amazing how obvious it is sometimes yeah yeah so but I try to you know be supportive and get out there as much as I can mm-hmm. so I'm part of uh, the AVRA group which is the American Veterans Motorcycle Riding Association and this chapter is based out of uh, Cherville American Legion, and uh, with this group, we just do a lot of uh, we do a lot of benefits for raising money for veterans' causes. Like we just had a suicide awareness ride. Now that's mostly for the suicide um, foundation, but they also support veterans. They support teenagers. They support anyone and everyone, you know, with the hotline, yeah. you know, veter- the crisis center. So um, we help with that benefit and then we do other benefits where uh, we raise money for the veterans home in Lafayette um, which is a very powerful thing Mm -hmm. a lot of that stuff reminds me of my grandpa it's funny I made my son go down with me last year and he saw me get emotional and I'm like well it's mostly because one of these guys reminds me of my grandfather Mm -hmm. you know my grandfather was always proud of his navy (laughs) his navy granddaughter Mm and he unfortunately passed away at a pretty young age of cancer. But uh, I listened to his World War II stories all the time. And then, um, so anyway, um, with Avro, we do a bunch of different things uh, where we help veterans. And we do like the flag lines. We get mm-hmm. requests all the time, which is where I'll be going today to do a flag line for a fallen veteran. And then um, I'm also, I'm a supporter of Operation Combat Bike Saver. Um, I haven't actually been there just yet to work on my bike. Mm-hmm. But what's cool about them is they, you know, they do a lot of the stuff with the um, PTSD. This is a way of, you know, veterans struggling to keep their minds occupied and feel like they, and I really feel it's just a matter of keeping them occupied and keeping them engaged mm-hmm. so that they're not in their own head yeah. with stuff that's going on or what they've experienced. With Mission One, um, you know, Johnny, this has been a huge, a huge project for him. And um, I was very honored when he asked me to be a board member for that. He, um, 
he knew I was very passionate about helping veterans. And, you know, they last year they did a coat drive, so we were collecting coats for the homeless veterans. And I think when he actually went down to Indy and got more involved with, you know, some of what other needs of the homeless veterans were, that is when this came to fruition. Mm -hmm. And um, he's, been, he's been doing a lot of great things with that, too. Um, so, of course, we have our benefit right at the end of this month to raise money more for... And we're doing more of a uh, backpack drive this mm -hmm. year so that we'll be able, you know... Well, the Indianapolis group will distribute the backpacks throughout, so... But, yeah, um, I'm hoping to get a little more involved with this one as the next year goes on, mm -hmm. you know, so... But, you know, like I said, when my son turned 16, it was like my whole world was revolved around raising him, and then I felt like, well, what am I going to do now? And I feel like I'm helping, and I have a bit of a purpose mm -hmm. that if I can help other veterans, I will, you know. So that's really what I wanted to do.